a little bit and uh, to talk about Operation Car Wash, Operation Lava Jato, as it's known here in Brazil. Uh, yesterday, Lula was proven innocent in yet another trial. And it has become public knowledge that Operation Car Wash's task force uh, received direct U.S. orders and training and cooperate actively with the American judicial system and police forces. Uh, so much so that the terms lawfare and hybrid warfare uh, have become common, uh, commonly employed over here. My question is, uh, can we expect more attempts of this sort of hybrid warfare? And how can this type of white collar interference be stopped? Happens all the time. Take Operation Car Wash. Uh, one of the consequences immediate consequences of the operation was to destroy major Brazilian businesses, which were in competition with US corporations, like Odebrecht. Is that an accident? Maybe, or maybe it's worth looking into. Uh, similar questions arise about uh, Dilma Rousseff's uh, fraudulent uh, uh, oh, elimination from power, totally fraudulent. Uh, well, when did it start? According to my informant about Brazil, my wife, Valeria, who pointed me to the timing, it started right when she made a speech, when she said that the profits from the new discoveries of Petrobras in the sea would be used for education and social welfare. Is that an accident? Well, maybe it's just a coincidence, or maybe some of these people who are engaged in constant class war uh, noticed it and decided to take action. I think there's a lot that can be learned about this if it's investigated, right? Same's true about a lot of other things. Take tax havens. We don't know the details about them. These were basically opened by the Reagan administration. Before that, they were illegal and they were uh, blocked by the Treasury Department. Uh, cor corporations are not are private tyrannies. They're private totalitarian institutions. Uh, now, there is a way to find out about them by government inquiry, subpoenas, for example. Occasionally, that's done. But the business world is too powerful to let it be done. So we don't know how much robbery of the public there is from these devices. Could be found out, but that would require inquiry. The rough estimates by what's leaked, even IMF reports, are for the United States maybe $30, 40000000000 billion over the last, uh, neo, during the neoliberal period, which would double the robbery to close to $100 billion. trillion. Okay, we, but it could be investigated. There's plenty that can be done. And uh, it's not easy. You don't have power and wealth behind you, obviously, uh, but it can be done. And these are what citizens should be doing. Uh, they should be looking into what lay behind car wash. Why was it instituted? Why was it pursued? Well, there's some, some reasons which are coming out right now. I didn't know about yesterday, but that's more to the thing. But I think uh, Glenn Greenwald's investigations have uh, certainly exposed quite a lot, but there are further questions to ask. And they go far back. So what, why, for example, why didn't Car Wash investigate the Cardoza regime? There's plenty of corruption there all over the place. Why not look at that? Well, you can think of some reasons. It might be worth looking into them. Actually, the uh, Jacobin in Brazil, the Brazilian edition of Jacobin, did do a study on this. Uh, came out, it's in Portuguese, came out with some interesting results. They have a, a book, in fact, on corruption during the Cardoso regime. Uh, I doubt that many people saw it. It's kind of like the uh, Fonsponek book, it can appear, but 
try to find it, but uh, you can find it. You know. Car wash didn't look into it. It's not Moro's concern. You know. Well, the reasons as to why car wash hasn't looked into that are, of course, coming out more and more and becoming ever more clear as the operations become disbanded and their motives are being truly exposed now. But Professor, I wanted to uh, ask you a bit more about Lula because right now he is engaging with the same uh, political parties and institutions that supported this whole car wash mess um, in order to uh, get the support for his election. Uh, do you think that Brazil needs this sort of ample front against fascism, or do you think that uh, the fascist threat is, should be combated in a more sectarian way, as it were? You know a lot more about that than I do. That depends on assessment of internal circumstances and developments within Brazil that I have only superficial knowledge of. But I think that's a good question for Brazilians to be asking themselves, particularly those who are committed to democracy and freedom. And remember, you can't forget the fact that Brazil is facing serious threats of destruction, a lot of them. One of them, which I mentioned, is the Paulo Guedes style crusade to sell Brazilian assets off so that they're not part of Brazil anymore. They'll be owned by international investors. That's a serious attack on Brazil, but there's a much more serious one. As I'm sure you know better than I do, uh, Brazilian scientists recently discovered that the southeastern part of the Amazon has already switched from a carbon sink to a carbon emitter. That's many decades before it was expected, long before. That's going to extend over the rest of the Amazon, especially if Bolsonaro is able to continue his policy of destroying the Amazon in the interest of miners, uh, rich ranchers, and so on. Uh, What's that going to do to Brazil? Well, it's going to turn it into a desert. It's going to end the rainfall, cut back sharply on rainfall, increase the already severe droughts, make larger agricultural areas basically unusable. It's also a severe harm to the whole world, but particularly Brazil. Now, those are problems that just can't be put off unless Brazil is able to handle those problems. It won't be around in a couple of decades in any viable form. This, of course, also means genocide for the indigenous population who are struggling hard, trying to be heard, pleading for some support. And the, you know, from a God's eye view, the irony is indescribable. These are the people who've been preserving the resources in the forests. Now they're the ones who are being wiped out by our destruction of the resources. I mean, if there's any ever, ever any history, I don't know if there will be, when people look back on this, they won't know how to describe it. You know, 